Welcome to the Gospel Truth. I'm Brother Alan Jackson, bringing to you spiritual songs and hymns and the power of the spoken word of God. First of all, giving thanks to God Almighty for blessing me with this another outpouring of his tender love and mercy, and that he's allowed me once again to be on this the time side of life and have this another blessed privilege to come to you in his name by way of this television medium and to bring to you another message from his holy and divine word. And as I always do, I like to continue to express my appreciation and my gratitude to the production staff for their diligent service to the gospel truth. And it is my prayer that God will continue to bless each one of them with those things that he knows that they are standing in need of. And then, of course, I'm praying on your behalf as participant observers. And it's my prayer that God will continue to bless you and your family with all of those things that he knows that you're standing in need of as well. And then, of course, I'm encouraging you to pray on my behalf because I'm also standing in need of prayer, and it's only God who can provide me with those things that I'm standing in need of. And so this evening, before we do get to the message, I do have a song for you. And just remember that we're always encouraging you to pray for those who are sick and shut in and those who are grieved and bereaved. And remember, you can also call the prayer line. The number will be rolling uh, through the program, or you can also write to us and send your prayer request. But we're praying on behalf of those who have submitted their prayer requests, and they know who they are, and we have prayed, and I'm sure that God will answer according to their needs. And so right now, the song. We're going to be listening to Don, and they're in Dallas. Right now, this is O Mary, don't you weep. I'm singing Mary, oh Mary, don't you weep.
certainly would like to express our appreciation and our gratitude to Don for that song, Oh Mary, Don't You Weep. And so this evening, I'd like to invite your attention to the book of Malachi, the third chapter, and the verses number 16. That's Malachi, the third chapter, and the verses number 16. And the Bible reads thusly, Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him, for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. Let me just read that last portion again for emphasis. For them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. And so it is from this verse tonight that I'm just going to call our lesson Sermon Thoughts. Sermon Thoughts. And I'm going to go through a number of illustrations that I hope will shed some life light to you on uh, what we are doing as Christians in this life and how we should be conducting ourselves. First, I'd like to invite your attention over to the book of 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, and the verses 1 through 4. And I'll make these, uh, uh, make three points, and then we'll move on to the next one. All right? The Bible reads thusly, and this is uh, 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. And Paul says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which you are also saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture and that he was buried and that he arose again the third day according to the scriptures and that he was seen of Cephas then uh, of the twelve. So the point I'm making here with regards to the gospel, God sent his son Jesus for this purpose, John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now, the reason that God had to send him, because you know what happened, our parents, our four parents, Adam and Eve, they blew it. They violated God's law over there in the beginning that created a breach. And in order to uh, eliminate the breach, a sacrifice had to be made. And there was no one on earth who was worthy to be offered as a sacrifice. Therefore, God did the very next best thing. He sent his own son, Jesus, to die on the cross of Calvary for our sins so that we could be reconciled to God. So the point I want to make to you with regards to the gospel, three points. First of all, Christ died, all right? He hung, bled, and died on the cross of Calvary. He was then buried in a borrowed tomb that belonged to Joseph of Arimathea. And he only needed it just for the weekend because he wasn't going to be there long. And then the Bible tells us that he was resurrected. So we see it was early, early Sunday morning. Jesus got up from the grave, a conquering king, saying, All hail, all power in heaven and earth is given unto me. Now, another point I want to make, and then we can go over to the book of James, the first chapter and uh, verse number 27, and we can see uh, what James has to say with regards to this matter. This is James, first chapter, and verses number 27. And the Bible says, Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. So the point that we're getting here is that some people just think that their religious practice should only be on Sunday or, you know, the, during the midweek where you have your Bible study. But I came by tonight to let you know that as we just read what pure religion is, it's doing something. See, a lot of people want to say you get religion, but we understand it's a doing thing when you are involved with religion. And so it shouldn't just be on Sunday or when Sunday and Wednesday night, but it should be every day. Religion should be practiced daily. 
First of all, when you get up in the morning, you should be engaged in a daily prayer. All right? Some of you never say, thank you, Lord, for another day. You never talk to him. What kind of relationship do you have with the Lord? But nevertheless, you should be involved in daily prayer. You should be involved in a daily study. Maybe you have a Sunday school lesson you should be studying for. Or maybe there are some scriptures that you uh, would like to become familiar with and understand them a little better. You just need to study them, all right? And then you should be involved with daily exhortations. Every day you should be encouraging the Lord to be with you and your family to guide you and to direct you and to keep you safe. This is something that you do every day, not just on Sundays or on Wednesday. And then, of course, you should be involved with daily obedience. Now, just because you're not at service anymore, you're not worshiping, that doesn't mean that you can become disobedient, all right? Because you're supposed to practice being obedient every day. You know, sometimes we uh, recognize that, uh, well, I can just say thank you, that ought to be enough. Well, that should be, but then I've added another little part to that. Not only should you be thankful to the Lord, but you should be obedient. So if you say thank you, Lord, then you can prove to the Lord that you really are thankful by being obedient to his will. All right? And just know the Lord is looking for you to say thank you. And if you remember the ten lepers, you know, uh, the Lord sent them on their way to be healed. One of them looked and saw that he was healed, turned around and came back and said, thank you. The Lord asked me, he said, well, what, that ten? He said, where are the nine? In other words, that's letting us know from that scripture that God is looking for you to say thank you. And then he's expecting you to be faithful on a daily basis, all right? Just because you're not at church on Sunday, that doesn't mean that you're not faithful to him. You don't want to go back and deal with the beggarly elements of the world just because you're not in service on Sunday. All right? Now, we also need to understand this, that God doesn't have any respect to persons. It doesn't matter who you are. All right? It doesn't matter. You could be uh, from Africa. You could be from Europe. You could be from China. You could be from Mexico. It doesn't matter. Let me take you over here to the book of Acts and uh, show you how that God does not have any respect of person. So the book is Acts, the uh, 10th chapter, and the verses number 34 and 35. Acts, the 10th chapter, verses 34 and 35. And then we hear these words that have been written. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respect of persons, but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. All right? Every nation. Again, like I said, Africa, uh, Asia, uh, Mexico, Europe, Japan, China, wherever it is that you are from, God doesn't have any respect to you just because you are from those per places, but he lets us know that everyone who fears him with a godly reverence to fear the Lord, that, that he accepts them because they are, number one, they're working righteousness. They're doing things that are right. They're not involved in some scheme uh -huh, to, uh, uh, what do you call, upscound some funds or to misappropriate funds from the church. They're not involved and they're working righteousness. And those people are accepted by the Lord. And he says, I will in no way cast you out. All right, so let, let, let's look at uh, uh, the thoughts or the sayings of a wise man. And, and you all know Solomon was considered to be one of the wisest men that ever lived. And so looking at these sayings, we hear him saying over there in the book of Ecclesiastes, the seventh chapter in the verses number one, he says, a good name is better than precious ointments. All right? Now, once you get up in little age and you start involving yourselves in the credit world, you will learn shortly that a good name is very important because once you have a, 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 a what do you call a black mark on your credit and you don't pay your bills, oh, it's going to be difficult for you to get some credit anywhere. All right? So understand, this saying of this wise man is very true. A good name is better 
than precious ointments. And that's Ecclesiastes, the seventh chapter, and the verse is number one. And then we can also uh, go over here, still in, in Ecclesiastes, and, and listening further to, to Solomon in that same chapter, uh, seventh chapter, and the verse is number 20. And you can hear uh, what he has to say with regards to this matter. This is uh, Ecclesiastes 7 and the verses number 20. And he says, For there is not a just man upon earth that doth good and doth not sin. All right? Understand that. That's the point that he is making to you. He says, For there is not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. Now, the Bible lets us know we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I know sometimes you might want to stand because maybe you're six foot two, six foot three, and you think you're all that, and you weigh about, what, 280 pounds, and, and you're trying to be pious. Well, just understand this. The Bible's already said, uh-huh. It's not a good person. It's not one here. It says, uh, there is not a just man upon the earth that doth good and sinneth not. All right, so we all have sin and come short of the glory of God, and we need to repent, or confess our sins one to another. And you repent to God, not to man. Sometimes men want you to repent to them, and they can't forgive you of their sins. But once you're forgiven by God, the Bible says he forgives you, and then he forgets it. He doesn't remember it anymore. But you can have folk always trying to get at you, going to something you've done in the past, trying to bring that up, and... Then they're, they're being blind <laughs> to what's going on. They have somebody there that's robbing them blind, but they're not care, concerned about that. They're just concerned about something that you did or were involved with 25, 30 years ago. But anyway, we just need to understand that as we deal with these sermon thoughts, and right now we're looking at the sayings of a wise man, all right? And then Solomon says this over in Ecclesiastes, the ninth chapter, and the verses number 10, he says, whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. So right now, while you're engaged in work, you should do it to the best of your ability. Because one day, yes, one day you're going to die. And, and Hebrews 9.27 tells us the, thing, the same thing. But it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. So you just need to understand you need to work to the best of your ability with your hands or whatever it is that you use in your mind uh, to do the best that you can. All right? And then he gives a message you know, over in uh, uh, Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter, and verse number 1, he leaves a message for the young people especially, because they need to understand that the Lord is looking for them to know him as well. And if you will, the, the, it's uh, Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter, and the verse is number 1. He says, remember now, when now, right now, while you are young, because see, the devil is out there trying to get you also right now while you're young. He's trying to tempt you and lead you, mislead you away from the Lord. All right? And so you need to understand. That's why Solomon said over there in Proverbs, the third chapter, and let's look at uh, verses number one and two. He says, my son, listen to Solomon now. He said, my son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. Okay, now you need, don't forget God, but let your heart keep his commandments. And this is what will happen. He says, for length of days and long life and peace they shall add to you. All right, now you know we've seen so many youngsters killed in so many different ways. All right, so but now if you trust in the Lord and you lean not to your own understanding, if you acknowledge God, he will always direct you your path, all right? So that's what we need to keep in mind, especially young people. But even old people, Satan will get in an old man or old woman as well and have them to lie or steal or, or do other things. But you just need to keep in mind that you do need to remember the Lord, all right? And then, as I pointed out just a few minutes ago about Hebrews 9.27, about it's appointed unto man once to die because, of course, once you get in the grave, there's not going to be any more work. 
But Solomon tells us about these bodies. This says to us over in the book of uh, Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter in the verse number 7. He says, then, all right, listen, then when, when we die, then shall the dust return to earth. I just told you. You know, maybe you're six foot five, six foot six, maybe you weigh 285, 300, but you're just a big piece of dust, that's all, because Solomon said, and the dust shall return to earth. Remember, God bent down in the beginning, scooped up some clay, and created a man, and then he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Well, the body is going to go back to the ground from which it came. And the soul, this is what the Bible says, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Now, right now, we are living bodies, all right? This body has a spirit, all right? But when the spirit leaves the body, it's going to be death, all right? There'll be no more work than can be done, all right? So just understand that. You are going to die one day, and I hope you don't think that you came here to live forever. Again, 927 Hebrews, and it, as it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. So now, see, if that was all it was, just dying, then it would be okay, you know. But, like, we're not like dogs, like the dog Rover. You know, when he's dead, he's just dead all over. But in our case, the spirit shall go back to God who gave it. Now, this is the point we need to understand. God has given us nothing but a great deal of liberty. That's right. We are free to go about, come about, do anything and everything that we desire, everything that we want to do. We th should thank God for that liberty. But we should understand one thing. We have a responsibility, and that is to fear God and keep his commandments. Now, if you're fearing God and keeping his commandments, then it's very unlikely that you're going to have a problem. But if you do that, fear God and keep his commandments, then you shall find favor from the Lord. Now, God, who grants us all of this liberty, just keep this in mind, he's going to bring it back to you in the judgment. The Bible says, oh, therefore, God shall bring every work into judgment. So you need to be understanding today the works that you are involved in. Are you seeking to promote the gospel promote the work of the church? Are you seeking to stifle it? Trying to hold somebody down? Keeping folk from coming to the church? You need to understand, God is watching. He's looking and he knows everything. And you might think for the moment that you're doing something slick. Well, just remember, you might get by, but you won't get away. Alright, so now as I continue in these sermon thoughts and try to bring my lesson to a close this morning, this evening for you. It's summertime, and yeah, we're in the month of July, and now probably now August. That's right, we're in the month of August. And so the summer is ending, but we can still have some good days. And so I came by tonight to let you know how you can have some good days while you're living down here on the earth. The Bible tells us over there in 1 Peter, the third chapter, and beginning with verse number 10, this is what we should be able to understand. The Bible says, and this is for the purpose of you having some good days, enjoying yourself, and I know some people have been going over there to the Dominican Republic and not even coming back, all right? But the Bible says, for he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil, his lips that they speak no guile, let him assure evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. All right? All right, so here's what the Bible says. And who is he that will harm you if you be followers of that which is good? So we keep this in mind. You want to have some good days? Keep your tongue from evil. Bible tells us over there in James 4 and 11 that we don't really have any business saying anything bad or negative about your fellow man, all right? Because that's just against the nature of God. The book is James, if you will, and it's the fourth chapter and the verse is number 11. And we hear James saying these words, Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother and judges his brother speaketh evil of the law and judges the law. 
But if thou judge the law, thou art a doer of the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. All right? So we need to keep that in mind, that you have a responsibility to do God's word and not be trying to seek to judge individuals because that's what our responsibility is. We are to be judged. We're to live a good Christian life because we're all going to stand before God in the judgment. And then we have to turn away from evil. All right, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 22, we, we should not have ourselves involved or engaged in any type of evil activities because those are the things that will cost you to lose your soul. If you will, go with me over to the book of 2 Thessalonians here just for a moment, and we'll see exactly how Paul says that. Now, I said 2 is actually 1 Thessalonians, the 5th chapter, and the verse is number 22. And these are the words of Paul. He says, abstain from all appearances of evil. You don't even go wear nothing that looks like it's evil. You need to stay away from that. Turn away from evil. All right? Do good. Galatians 6 and 10. The Bible tells us that we have responsibility to do good uh, to all men, but especially those who are of the household of faith. And so I trust that you will keep that in mind, understand that that is what the Lord is expecting us to do. And that's Galatians, the sixth chapter, and the verse number 10. And he says, as you therefore have opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. So you want to do good, all right? Seek peace, 1 Peter 3, 10, and 12. We just read that. Seek peace and ensue it. I came by tonight to give you some th sermon thoughts as you walk on through this summer and enjoy yourself, but just understand, understand that you need to keep the Lord always in mind. By faith, repentance, confession, and baptism, the Lord will add you to his body, which is his church, and then if you live a faithful life, he will save you in the end. I'm Brother Jackson, and I'm encouraging you to join us again. Until next week, it's my prayer that God will continue to bless you and your family and to keep you all safe.